Good morning from the spot you saw me in in the last video, at the end of the last video. Had a good night's sleep, got about nine hours of sleep, and I forgot how much I enjoy these cooler weather camping trips for that reason. I can just stay in my sleeping bag for hours and hours, and it's dark for a relatively long time, and it's just great. I love it. I'm camped on the edge of the San Rafael Swell in kind of north-southern Utah and I'm gonna be heading, I believe, over here today. There is a spectacular mountain over there that I'm going to be climbing. Can't quite see it from this campsite, but once I get out to the main road again out there, I'll be able to give you guys a shot at it from afar. My breakfast this morning is the usual for me for these trips, and for home, actually. I, I also eat this at home for breakfast. Coconut Greek yogurt granola poured into the yogurt or onto the yogurt and then some kind of sparkling water this is lime watermelon tasty stuff so i'm still pretty far away but that mountain right in the middle there that is what I'm heading toward. There are a lot of campers out here. Holy cow. Wow. I think this actually might be the weekend before spring break for Utah schools. So basically it is spring break. And so Wow, there are just tons of people here. So I need to follow this dirt road, but it's way too rough up here in Rocky. So I parked down here in the sea of campers. And I'm gonna hoof it to the base of the mountain. Here's a, a good close-up look, or at least closer look at the mountain that I'm gonna climb. As you can imagine, there is no trail up this thing. It requires some pretty serious scrambling and even some some rock climbing, so we'll see how it goes. So in the last video that you saw when I was in Capitol Reef National Park, sorry for the sunlight, when I was in Capitol Reef I showed you some uranium mines. Well there are some in this area too. There was a lot of mining activity in this area. Let me show you this. There's a mine shaft right here. You can't really see it, but like the ones in Capitol Reef, it's it's gated up, you can't go inside. And there's this big old, I don't know what this is, some sort of loading apparatus, I would assume, for loading, loading trucks with ore from the mine. Pretty neat. This probably dates back to the 50s, I would guess. This is cool, check out this burned out, shot up old car here. Anyone know what kind of car this is? So I've been following this road for the last 40 minutes. I'm now leaving that road. I'm gonna work my way up the mountain. Just an incredibly complicated and complex looking mountain. There's no one way that looks obvious to get up this thing. But I do have a GPS track of someone else who climbed this mountain, so the plan is just to follow that wherever it goes up this thing, and hopefully that leads me to the top. And right here, there are a couple of what look like mining claim stakes. There's this one here and another one over there. 
Interesting. It doesn't look old. Like, this wood looks very new. Huh. And just above those mining claims, I've stumbled across this road, this old dirt road here. Definitely not really usable now, but I assume it leads to a mine somewhere over here, maybe. So it turns out that old road that I showed you is actually what the previous hiker, the one whose GPS track I'm following, he followed that road. And so I've been following it up the mountain as it switchbacks back and forth, and it's been great. I've been able to gain some good elevation without it being super difficult hiking, you know? Like it's pretty mellow hiking, it's not that hard, so... So far, so good. I know it's not gonna last. I know there is some difficult scrambling and climbing up ahead, but for now, this is great. Well, I've reached the end of the road here. You can see some of the switchbacks here and then coming up this way. And the road just dead ends right here. There's just a pretty steep drop off into nothing. Oh, and check out this, this old truck over here. That's cool. Again, a relic of Time gone by, no mining around these parts now. But now the plan is to leave this beautiful, lovely road. And I think I have to start going up. Uh, I think the track that I'm following goes up this slope here. Again, not the easiest, simplest, most straightforward climb this mountain. an hour and 45 minutes into the hike and I've reached where it starts to get serious here. Uh, this is just an incredible area. I mean, as you can see, this crazy, <laughs> this crazy rock spire behind me. This is not the way I'm going up though. The summit is up this way. Let me show you what I'm facing here. So I'm at this kind of flat saddle area. From here, this is the way up. And then the summit is over here somewhere. So, there are a few different sections that are tricky sections. I think there are three. So the first one is, let me see here, is down here somewhere, going up over this step. That's the first crux, the first difficult section. There's another one somewhere up here, going up this section, I believe, and then the third one is somewhere going up this final little, little capstone area. Now, I am a very experienced rock climber. These three crux sections here, this is going beyond hiking. We're getting into, into low-grade rock climbing territory. So I've checked out the bottom of the three crux steps. Looks pretty trivial. I'm not too worried about it. It doesn't look unsafe. It doesn't look overly difficult. It won't be a problem. Uh, if I get to the second one or the third one and I feel like they are too scary or dangerous, then I'm just going to turn back. No big deal, right? But you never know until you try. And I actually do have a rope and a harness in my backpack here. I've been lugging that up. And so if I do get to the top, I can just rappel down the difficult sections. I don't need to down climb them. So I'm excited. Let's get ready here and tackle that first of the three steps.
course, I've got to do it twice for the camera. Yeah, that really wasn't too bad. It was just right here, that little first step, and then I've scrambled up this loose stuff right here. And that has brought me to step number two, crux number two. The info I have says that there's a pile of rocks at the base, a stack of rocks. Sure enough, there is. And again, this one doesn't look too bad. Looks like there are actually bigger holds on this one than that first one. It's about a 10 foot high step. They got big, you've got big things to grab onto all the way up. I'm recording this one on the GoPro so I don't have to climb back down right away and climb it twice. Not bad. Two down, one to go. That one was definitely more difficult than the first one. You probably heard it in my my grunts and my exertions. There is a, uh, a rappel anchor up here so I can rappel down that step on the way down, which I will probably do. You've got this cord wrapped around this anchor block here and a quick link, a little carabiner sort of thing at the end there. Now from here, as I understand it, there are two options. One is to go up this chimney cleft thing over here, kind of behind this pillar. And the other one, the more common way, is to go over here somewhere. Let's go check out that one first. Okay, I'm at the base of the last step here, but I want to give you a panoramic view of where I am. It's incredible. This is unreal. So this is the way I'm climbing up through this uppermost section here. Then over to the left, we've got this view. And looking down, the mountain just drops away underneath your feet here. It's incredible. This is the way I've come up, down over here. And this is looking off to the right. It's incredible, incredible views. And I started out over this way. There's a city of campers over there. Just incredible, what a place. And for what I think are probably pretty obvious reasons after seeing this video, not a lot of people get to see this. In fact, 99.99% of the population should not attempt this mountain. I think that when I climbed Gannett Peak in Wyoming over the summer, I said that something like 99% of, of the population should not attempt that mountain. This one is, is trickier. It's not as overall grueling. I mean, that took three days. This is taking a few hours, but this is a bit more tricky than that one for sure. So I'm gonna bump it up to 99.99% of the population should not attempt this mountain. All right, let's knock off this last little step here. Got some nice handholds here and here. Okay.
Okay. Yes. Oh, someone dropped a little flashlight up here. Ooh. That's the way I came up and down there and off through there. But I am on top. Feels good. What a mountain. Definitely not for the faint of heart, I'll tell you that. So I am up on the summit area now. There's one last little scramble here up this thing. I believe this is the true summit. It seems pretty tame and moderate compared to what we did over there. So should be up there in a few minutes, I would guess. It's like one last little, little scramble here. I've made it. I think it's this point over here. Whew. <laughs> oh, I'm tired. This is this is the summit right here. Feels good. So once again, here's the top, complete with all the bird poop you could ever want. Here's the view, and what a view it is. These are the Henry Mountains out here. That was the last mountain range in the lower 48 to be mapped and explored. And this is the San Rafael Swell. This is a basically a large uplifted area in south central Utah. It's all desert, all canyons and cliffs, and just a vast, empty, amazing area. What a beautiful day to be up here. I finally get a, a blue sky day on this trip. This is the first full day of blue skies that I've seen here. What a place, wow. Amazing summit up there, just incredible. Uh, I'm now at the top of the spot where I climbed up. I'm gonna rappel down this step and probably the next one too. Both are, are down climbable, but it'd be a little bit scary to be honest to, uh, to down climb those. So I'm gonna rappel down them. Got my rope, got my harness, got my rappel device. Good to go. I'm just gonna get the rope all set up here and then we'll head down over the edge. Okay, the rope is coiled, ready to be tossed. Rope! You always want to call out rope even if you know no one is, <laughs> is underneath you. Or at least even if you're pretty sure no one's underneath you because you don't want to hit anyone. This rappel anchor was already set up. There are a couple of cords wrapped around this boulder thing right here and then a, a quick link on the end and that's what I've got my rope run through. Let me get my rappel device all set up and get off this thing. Okay, the rappel is all set up. The rappel device looks good. Carabiner is locked. The anchor looks good. And I actually backed it up with this other anchor over here. I was originally just going to rappel off of this one, 
But I thought, yeah, you know what, better safe than sorry. There was already some webbing around this big boulder over here. So I extended it down this way a little bit. And I feel better now. I've got two solid anchors. Let's do this. Here we go. First steps down into the void. When you see people bounding down cliffs in movies or buildings or whatever, that's not usually the best way to, to repel. You want to be much more controlled and slow than that. Got a kind of a tangle of rope here. Let's send it off over over that next little ledge. Now, I think I'm on the ground terra firma. Oh yeah, and sure enough, this is the other, the other rappel station, the other anchor here. Perfect. So basically the way rappelling works is that for a cliff like this, that's relatively short. I mean, this was probably a 100 foot rappel, 90 foot rappel. I have a 70 meter rope, so that's about what, 230 feet. With a rappel like this, you, you double the rope over, and the middle point of the rope is at the anchor at the top. And so you double the rope over, toss off the ends, rappel down, and then you pull one end. You pull one of the ends, and the rope will go through the anchor at the top and fall back down to where you are. So you don't need to leave your rope up there. This pull is harder than they usually are because I added that that backup. I extended the anchor past the top. So it's a little bit harder to pull the rope. Anyway, I'm ready to pull. I'm ready to take cover so that the rope doesn't hit me and any rocks that come down don't hit me. Rope! Perfect, I think that went well. Yep, here's the end of the rope. Perfect, all right, rappel number two. Okay, rappel number two is all set up. I mean, the anchor was already set up around that, that little jutting rock right there. And this one is just about a 10 foot rappel, nothing too scary, 10 or 12 feet maybe. All right, piece of cake. Now we just have that one easier down climb that I've already down climbed before, so we're good. So let me go ahead and pull the rope and get all this tidied up and then I'll reconvene with you. I'll regroup down at that flat spot, that little saddle down there. Well, everyone, we did it. What a crazy hike slash climb. What a thing, what a mountain, <laughs> what an adventure. Had a great time but I can't recommend it to anyone. Uh, this is not the kind of thing that, that most people should do. Like I said before, I'm a very experienced rock climber. I've done, I mean, it's gotta be a couple thousand rock climbs. I've done 200 first descents. I'm very comfortable moving over rock. And so I, I felt comfortable doing this alone, but I do not recommend anyone do this uh, alone, especially. But I had a great time. I loved it. It was a really fun adventure. It was everything I hoped it would be and more. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did it. This thing has been on my bucket list for years, and so I'm, I'm thrilled that I finally got to do it. It's 2.20 right now. I'll be back at the car at, I don't know, around four, and then I have an hour or two of driving, and then I wanna stop and get some food along the way, so I'm not sure when you'll see me again here, but uh, I'll fill you in when I have something to say. I've made it to the town of Green River, which is kind of a, a bleak, 
little town out in, out in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's definitely seen better days, but it's a good spot to stop and get gas and food. And that's what I've done. I picked up my dinner here. I got a Western burger. So, you know, basically a burger with an onion ring and or a couple of onion rings and, and barbecue sauce on it. And then some fries. I'm at a place called Chow Hound. And yeah, it's good. It's good burger, good fries. I actually might go back in and get a shake or something, but yeah, it's nice to, it was nice to drive here and to just like sit and not be hiking. <laughs> I enjoyed that. It's nice to sit here in the parking lot and just eat my food and put on some calories and, <laughs> and enjoy myself here. Uh, once I'm done here, there's one other thing in town that I want to show you guys before I head out of here toward Moab. Dinner was delicious and I am now on the outskirts of town, on the outskirts of Green River on a little hill above town. I'm here to see this thing and this thing. Let's go to this one first. So this is a pile of concrete blocks. This is a public art project. Here it is in all of its glory. Now, I have to say, I have to admit, I have seen this thing from the interstate, which is out here. I have seen this from the interstate dozens of times. I had no idea it was supposed to be art. Uh, I don't know if that says more about me as a, as a non-art connoisseur or if it says more about the artwork itself, but let me pull out my phone and read to you a little blurb about this. So this was created by an artist named Andrew Rogers and uh, this is what he says on his website. In response to a request to realize a gentleman's dream, Andrew Rogers created Ratio, that's the name of this thing, Ratio, in Green River, Utah, it is based on the Fibonacci sequence. And then I just looked up the Fibonacci sequence to refresh my memory and it, it starts with a zero and one, and then you add those two numbers together and get one. So that's the next number in the series. Then you add the one and the previous one together and you get two. You add the two and the one and you get three. The three and the two and you get five. The five and the three and you get eight. So basically you, you add the previous two numbers together and that gives you the next number. Then you combine that with the previous number to get the number that follows that. I don't know if that makes sense. Go read the Wikipedia page if you, if you want, uh, want to make more sense of it. And I'm heading over to the second sculpture now. It's called Elements. Again, that one was called Ratio. This is called Elements. The structure comprises four 10 meter high columns, one topped in 23 karat gold. I don't think that's real gold. I'm pretty sure that's not real gold. Representing the four elements, earth, fire, water, and wind. There's the 23 karat gold topper on that one. So I'm guessing that's earth. So earth, fire, I don't know. Wind, water, water, wind. You be the judge, I suppose. Heading back to the car now, I wouldn't say that these things are, are must-see sights. Not for me anyway, I, I suppose your mileage may vary. But I just learned that they were here and that they were art. And so I decided to stop by just to tick them off of my, my personal list of things to see and do. I'm going to head back into town now, head into Green River, get gas, and then I'm going to get back on the road, go find a campsite somewhere north of Moab. How great is this campsite? There is just nothing out here, and I love it. These are the LaSalle Mountains above Moab. We're looking into the northern end of Arches National Park over here. This is just all BLM land where I am right now. Not much to see over on this side. The highway, the interstate, is a few miles over that way. And I'm alone, even though it is the weekend 
and the weekend of spring break here. And I thought I would give you a quick tour of my setup here on this trip. I'll start with the cargo box here. Uh, in this bag I have a, a propane powered shower that I have yet to use on this trip. Here is my, I think, five pound propane tank. I have some other little solar panels. Some folding solar panels in there. I have my big tripod. I have a helmet, which I should have brought on that adventure today, but I didn't. And then my climbing gear is in here, like the rope that I used and my harness and everything is over there. My fishing stuff is over there. I love having this thing. This is the best investment I've made for my car camping, bar none. So I highly recommend getting one of these if you can. And then of course I have my solar panel on top of it. Could use a cleaning. And then this is new on this trip. These are my 50 or $60 traction boards or traction, what are they called? Recovery boards. There we go. Traction mats, recovery boards, whatever you want to call them. I did a video review of these a couple months ago, but I have them attached to the top here with industrial strength zip ties. These are 250 pounds and UV uh, resistant. So they're just super heavy duty. I think I have six of them holding these on and it's been great. They haven't moved a, a, a millimeter on this trip. They are, they are super, super solid on there and that's, that's a good place for me to put them when I'm not carrying my, my kayak here, when I don't need that space for a kayak. And then on the inside here, nothing too special. I've got my shoes here. My bed is here. My cabinet with the microwave is over there. The power bank that I'm reviewing on this trip is right here, the Blue Eddy 2000 watt hour power bank. Fridge is behind it, Alpacool C20. Over here I just have miscellaneous junk that I have, that I had in my backpack today while I was hiking, but that I need to, I need to uh, put away tonight, so I'll do that. These bins down here have my food in them. Got some water down here. Here's another view of the whole setup. Little fire extinguisher, dirty clothes. My empty backpacks are over there, along with a couple other things. And then in front I have this big six gallon water jug that I bought at Walmart. My little trash bag here. And then down below there I have in a very messy looking jumble or pile, I have all my other water and uh, sparkling water drinks of choice down in there in the in the passenger footwell area. Even though I've done multiple videos of my setup in my RAV4 at this point, I know people are always finding the channel and, and the setup does change a little bit from time to time, from trip to trip, and so I do like to show it to you guys and show you what's new, what's changed, and all that good stuff. But I think it's time to settle in for the night. It is 7, 10, it'll be dark and well, at least the sun will go down over this hill in, in about 20 minutes behind that hill over there. I'm just gonna enjoy the, the last views. Enjoy my, enjoy the last bit of warmth too before it gets cold tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was a pretty intense adventure today, that hike, but I had a great time. I'm glad I was able to share it with you guys because it is, I mean, it was so spectacular up there. And that drone footage, man, I love the drone. I love how, I've said this before, but the drone makes it look as epic as it feels. When I just have a regular camera in my hand and I'm at the top of a mountain, you know, doing a panorama, showing you everything, you can see how beautiful it is, but you don't feel how epic it is. But that's what the drone does. It feels epic. And uh, that's how it feels in person to be there. So hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what your favorite part was and I will see you guys in the next one. And again, I'm really excited for tomorrow's adventures. I think you will be too. So stay tuned, be sure to check back and see what the next video has in store. See ya. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.